Hello and welcome back to another video. Carnival is over now, so we are back to normal. Today I am waking up between Bridport and Dorchester. I'm heading to Piddle Trent High to pick up some oats. Then I am taking that down to Southampton. I'm picking up a load from Thatcham to take to Exeter. First things first, as always, I make my cup of tea. And then it's time to open those curtains and get to work. The first task I need to complete is my daily checks and it's very cold out there this morning. My truck is telling me that at the moment it is one degree outside. Daily checks done and now it's off to the farm which is only about 40 minutes away. That is all. Right, lovely. Right, let's try and get out of this lay by after this one. I head up the A35 towards Dorchester and the roads are pretty quiet this morning. I head right around the Dorchester bypass until I get to the turn in that leads up through the Piddle Valley. This road can sometimes be a little bit of a rat run and there are a few narrow spots. Once I get to the farm I need to go up quite a long track which will take me up to some farm buildings at the top of the hill and as I'm going up it almost looks like it's trying to snow. I've arrived about 10 minutes early, which normally I try and aim to be a little bit early if I can. And I was going to say no one's turned up yet, but I can see somebody coming up the drive. He ain't hanging about either. I've been out to speak to the chap. He's just got to tip a trailer in the pit and then I can go and load. So while he's doing that, I'm making another cup of tea. And it is actually starting to snow out there. Only tiny little bit don't think it's going to come to much. Apparently Somerset is going to get hit today. Just as I finish making my cup of tea, the farmer has just finished tipping in the pit. He gives me the thumbs up and it's time for me to get into the position to load. I have loaded here a few times before and I know it is very tight. I know that I cannot get under the spout with my unit, but my trailer will go underneath it. As I swing round into the yard, I need to take up as much space as I possibly can. And even then, I know that I'm going to have to shunt once with my unit and trailer. With my old unit and trailer, I could just and just do it in one, but not with this setup. And I have positioned myself in a way so that I've got enough room to swing the front round to make the back go towards the shed. It's not quite enough, so I just need to make one more shunt forwards, trying to use every inch of space that I've got, and then as I head back this time, I should go straight into the shed with a bit of careful manoeuvring and watching for the silos on the other side. This is a spout load and the spout is inside of the shed. I think it was like yesterday, you'll probably end up doing a lot of shunting to get me. Ah, right, yeah, and that's right. Now that I'm in under the spout in the shed, I'm just watching my weigher. So I got a good gauge of when I need to go up and check on it and move forwards. This is a load of oats and oats are very light so sometimes it's hard to get your full weight onto the trailer but luckily I just about managed it. Once I have got my full weight on I give it a bit of a shunt back and forwards and I put my sheet on before leaving. This has taken around half an hour to 40 minutes to load and the farmer has given me a grain passport. This is what we call snow in the southwest. Hopefully <laughs> this is all it comes to. This load is going into Southampton, which is about an hour and a half away. I meet a horse box at the end of the track and I need to turn right. I need to take up the whole entrance to make this right turn. So I pull forwards, let them go through, and then I can reverse back to make the turn. The farmer that owns this farm and is normally here loading wasn't here today. I've been told that he's recently been unwell and I hope he gets well soon. I head back down to the A35 and then I pick up the A31 which leads on to the M27. Then I can take the slip road for the M271 towards Southampton. The M271 is quite a short motorway at just three miles long. I arrive at the docks where I'm tipping this and I go straight onto the Weybridge. It looks like I'm the only one here so this might be a quick tip and go. I open my sheet so that they can sample the load have my paperwork over and wait for further instructions. I um, haven't rung up yet because I don't know if this sample is going to pass, but I'm just going to fill out what I think I'm doing next. And if it's changed, then I'll just have to write out another ticket because this is a tailboard tip. So it would be like tip and go. I can just ring and go. I went to this place where I'm going next. I actually went there yesterday, so I know where it is as well. So I can just ring him 
and hopefully we can sort things out really quickly. I get my instruction of where to tip, but when I put the engine on, for some reason, the truck is telling me that I'm low on air. Which seems really unusual because I've driven here with no problems whatsoever. So I head into the shed and get myself lined up, ready to tip, expecting that the air will build up to a normal level. I can see that there is a space for the oats at the edge of the shed. That is where the roof is quite low, so I angle myself towards the middle of the shed, where the roof is higher, so it gives me plenty of height to tip. Then I can get out and check that I'm happy with my positioning, and I can open my tailboard. Once that's done, I can put my PTO in and tip the load. Except, strangely, my air has not built up, and without enough air, I cannot get my PTO in. All I can do is rev the engine to try to increase the air. Luckily it works and I have enough air in the truck now to be able to tip the load. I put my onboard wire on so that I can see how much is left in the trailer whilst I'm tipping up. I'm also keeping an eye on the height of the trailer as it goes towards the roof. With products like oats, I only really need to go up to two rams to get the product out. I put the body back down and then I can get out and do up the tailboard. I can't hear any obvious signs of an air leak as I walk up and down the truck and the air seems to be holding until... I hear one ping of a low air noise. So I get myself out of the shed and I need to do a bit of manoeuvring to get onto the way bridge. Once I've weighed out, I'm going to find myself a spot to park so that I can check around the truck for an air leak. Thank you, cheers. That's me weighed out, so off to find somewhere to park. So I'm building up the air um, just so that I can go outside and hopefully hear where this air leak is coming from. Best case scenario, I find it and fix it myself. I thought I could hear something from behind the cab, but now I'm not so sure. I open up the bonnet to see if I can hear anything from under there. I also put my hand in around to see if I can feel for any air escaping. I think I can hear something very faintly, but I'm not 100% sure. My hearing is not the best and I cannot feel anything either. I also check in around the trailer, just in case it is the trailer and not the unit. But everything seems fine with the trailer and all the airbags are up. Well, I can't find anything obvious, so I've disconnected the red line. I'm going to have to give in and ring Bruce, which I don't really like doing because I know that Bruce has a lot to do and if I can fix it myself, What's going on with my hair? If I can, <laughs> if I can fix it myself, then I'd rather do that and just get on with it. Where are we? Bruce, 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 Bruce Wayne's mob. Hi, Jen. Hello. Um, I've got an air problem with the truck. You've got air in it. Let the handbrake off and see if you can hear air leaking with the handbrake off. Right. Do you now fire the lorry back up? Right. And stand the near side front step. Near side front step. Of the lorry. Yeah. Passenger side front step. And here, if you can just see if you can hear air leaking from around that in behind the step. Right. Okay. Two seconds. You can hear air leaking from in behind that step. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon it's the valve on the bottom of the air dryer has probably gone. Right. Yeah, all right, give me five minutes, come back to you. Okie dokie. Bye, 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 bye. Bye. Well, unfortunately, it seems like I might be waiting here for a bit if it is what he thinks it is. Um, so I'm just going to make myself a bit of porridge because it is about, I think it's about 11 o'clock now. Yeah. 10 to 11 so i am gonna make myself a spot of breakfast so i'm a bit late for it anyway oh i was so hoping it was going to be something i could fix myself but never mind two things that i'm going to do whilst i'm waiting for a phone call is i'm going to put my red airline back on obviously have quite low ad blue so i'm just going to top that up I cannot last a week on one tank of AdBlue, so I always carry some spare cans. Just as I am filling up with AdBlue, 
Pete Bayford stops to see if I need a hand with anything, but unfortunately this is a call out job. I thought while I was waiting I'd have a bit of a clean up, but nowhere. <laughs> still have a clean up in between checking on the ad blue. As it's that time of year when the gritters are out, I also give my mirrors and windscreen a good clean. Luckily, the good thing about being stuck here is they have a decent toilet. I've topped up the ad blue. I've had some breakfast. I've had a cup of tea. I've been to the loo. I've had a clean up. I've cleaned my mirrors. And now I'm bored. I don't know what else to do now. Oh, I know what I've got to do. I have to order my sister's Christmas present. I know she wants some pyjamas and I think she wants some sort of speaker. I don't know whether to get an, or an Alexa. She doesn't watch my videos, so it's fine. She's never going to know unless one of you tell her. And with that, the Scania mechanic arrives and gets to work on diagnosing the problem. Unfortunately, this is a job that requires tilting the cab, which means that I'm ordering Christmas presents out in the cold. And that black cat there is the culprit of the problem, so Bruce was right. Well, that's that done. I've been here just over three hours. I'm still going to the same farm that I was going to. I'm going to a farm over in Fatcham now, so I'm going to give them a ring. Typically, it had to happen on a day when it's four degrees outside. Right, time to warm up and head over to Fatcham. It's so nice that that beeping sound has now stopped. And it also feels good that I'm heading out of the docks in a nice warm cab. This journey will take a little over an hour and I've rung the farmer to let him know of my ETA. I head back up the M271 onto the M27, played by the M3 where I shoot off onto the A34 until I get to the A303 which I only need to follow for a few miles. From here I pick up the lanes to the farm and apparently if the middle of the road is green means that not much traffic uses the road and I'm hoping that not much traffic is using the road today either. Soon I am at the farm and because I've been here already this week I know where I need to park, so I pull up the track in front of me and back around the corner towards the spout where I'm loading barley out of. Sometimes with grain you can do two or three loads out of the same farm and then not ever go there again. This is because a farmer will sell a certain tonnage of grain to a merchant and then the merchant will find a haulier to move that tonnage of grain, usually in the space of a week or two. The price of grain goes up and down so the farmer will decide on the best time for them to sell their grain. This is another spout load, so once I park under the spout, I go and find somebody to load me. Well, I'm finally here now, and I think I've just about warmed up. <laughs> it's so cold out there today. I'm in under the spout, and the girl has just started loading it. All the dust flying about outside, so I know she started it. I have my wear on as well, and this is the second spout load of the day. Like, I very, very rarely do spout loads, but I've had two in one day. This will take around 40 minutes to load, and I move forwards and back accordingly by getting up and looking at the load and also watching my onboard weigher. I'm just going to move back a little bit. I'm not quite in the middle. I do about a ton and a quarter here, and then a ton and a quarter in the second part of the middle, if that makes sense. So you've got the front, the back and then either side of the bar. So I don't really want to get it right on the bar because um, it will hit the bar and flick out of the trailer. I think I've got it right. Once I get close to my weight, I let the lady know so that she can stop the grain. I'm just gonna fill in the passport that the lady gave me. I'm just gonna give it a shunt forward. Right, sheet on. I did clean up earlier but after loading that barley, it's back to being an absolute mess again because the wind's coming this way and every time I open the door to get out, <laughs> everything came in to the truck. Dust flies everywhere with barley. Here we go. This load is going to Exeter where I will be able to tip if I get there late. I just need to let them know that I am going to be later than expected. I head back to the A303 down the lanes that I came in on. I meet a couple of cars, but nothing too major. Once I get onto the A303, I make a quick pit stop for some fuel. I don't get a full tank because it's getting late and I don't want to risk parking up tonight with a full tank. 
I follow the A303 and the A30 all the way down to Exeter. As I get closer to Exeter, it looks like they've had a small dusting of snow. The journey from the farm to the mill has taken just under three hours. And as I pull round to the Weybridge, there is another truck just pulling off of the Weybridge. Sheet off. Looks like they got a few late ones in here today. I get all my paperwork together and then I go into the booth to input my data on a kind of self-service Weybridge. Then at the end, somebody will tell me which Weybridge to go on. So I've put all my details in and there's no one up in the QC room. I've walked all the way up the two flights of stairs and there's no one up in the office. I've rung the out of hours service a number of times and no one's answering. People tip in on the front pits when I came in and there was somebody who drove off the Weybridge as I came in. So he must have been weighed in. But now I cannot find anyone. Just my luck today. <laughs> After around 15 minutes, I managed to get hold of somebody and he lets me know that I need to go on to pit 2. So I head around to the tipping bays and back towards door 2, which will automatically open as I get close enough. These bays are quite narrow, so I need to get it just right. I get out and swipe my card to get the pit started. And whilst it's getting started, I put my grain sock on. And then I can lift my trailer up, ready to tip. Before I open the grain hatch, I just check on the screen just to make sure I can tip. It says tip now, so I let the barley go into the pit. Well, that's me tipping. It's absolutely freezing out there. Hopefully this should take around half an hour-ish. It's now, it is now quarter past seven. I've had my number through. It says I'm going to somewhere near Ilminster. Whilst I'm tipping, I'm going to make a cup of tea and I will give the farmer a phone call. Hello? Hello, it's Gemma from Wayne's Transport. I'm coming to collect some wheat from you tomorrow morning. I leave it till half past seven, please. Yeah, half past seven? Yeah, it's um, what... still dark. <laughs> okay, don't know the best way to get to you. Uh, you're coming from Exeter direction? Yeah. Keep going another couple hundred yards. There's a T-junction where you can turn round, come back up the road and back onto the concrete pad against the orchard fence. Ah, uh, right. Yeah, that's perfect. Thank All you. Right, perfect. Cheers. Bye. Bye, bye, bye. I do. I feel a bit better now. I've made me a cup of tea. I know where I'm going tomorrow and it seems like it could be quite an easy pickup, hopefully. And the farmer sounded really jolly. I keep an eye on my onboard weigher to check when the trailer is empty. And once it is, I go and remove my grain sock. I go to undo my tailboard, but one of my twist socks is being very stubborn. Once it's sorted, I can open my tailboard to let the last little bit out. Then I put my trailer down and pack away my grain sock before going to the back and sweeping my trailer out to make sure that it's ready for the next load. Once I'm happy it's nice and clean, I can do my tailboard up and sweep in the pit, making sure it's clean for the next driver. Then I head to a different weigh bridge to weigh out, which is normally pretty straightforward in here. Normally you swipe your card, press yes a couple of times, and then you get your ticket. The printer wouldn't print the ticket because it was saying paper misfeed, so I've left them a note because I can't get hold of anyone on the phone and I can't find anyone. I was knocking on the window. No one was answering me. I've only got so much time to go and quickly get a shower and park up so that is what i'm gonna do exeter services isn't very far from there so i pop in for a shower my only problem is that it's past eight o'clock now and it's really hard to get to space in here there's no spaces in the first couple of rows so i'm gonna try right around the front but there is not one space left so i'm just gonna have to pull in behind the rest of the lorries that are parked here for the night I quickly get my stuff together and rush in for a shower. The shower is free. This is our shower. Oh, we've put it back up really high again. We put it in there the other day. This is where I don't film. Well, that's me. <laughs> that's me all showered. So I'm going to pop out into the uh, services and go and get some tea because I don't have anything left this week. It's Thursday, so I'm gonna go and get myself a super nice tea. Quickly, very quickly. I will show you a little bit of what I've got. Smoky egg and bean, something or other. It's really nice, I have had it before. So that's tomorrow for breakfast. Mango and watermelon fruit. 
for tonight i have naughty and spice chicken wrap m&s festive wrap with peri peri spice chicken chorizo style stuffing slaw and hot cranberry sauce oh, i didn't realize it's hot cranberry sauce anyway that's what i'm gonna have and i also got myself a caramel tree and these are really really nice it's like caramac with caramel inside lush off as far as i can go on my time that is my plan is now to use the remaining time on my taco to get as close to the farm that I'm collecting from tomorrow as I can. I only have around half an hour left but it could make a big difference on how my day goes tomorrow, especially as it's Friday and I'm looking forward to going home. Right, that is me done for the night. So I'm going to get my curtains closed. I'm now parked up with a cup of tea in bed. It's about half past nine. I parked up at nine o'clock. I've done a 15 hour day. So I'm gonna have nine hours off and get to the farm first thing in the morning. All in all, it's not been too bad today considering I had a breakdown. I still got tipped in Exeter. So it hasn't been too bad really. It's just been a longer day than it should have been. Thursday today, I'm feeling quite tired. So I think I'm probably going to have a bit of an early night. Once I've had my cup of tea, it will probably be lights out. Thanks for watching.